Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a little bookshelf tour, just a, a quick peek at my shelves. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of like the pull every book out of the shelf bookshelf tour, so I figure we will just go over each of the shelves. I will talk you through roughly how I've organised it and some of my thoughts on some of the books on the shelves uh, and just a quick overview an overview of the shelves rather than a full-on tour. I did do a bookshelf reorganisation a few weeks ago, so, or a few months ago now, so I can link that where I reorganised the shelves, but I will give you a tour. I'll give you a tour of how we organise it here in this household. Let's just get into it. So let's pan you back a little bit and uh, show you the full extent of the shelves. Right, welcome to the room. So I have just these two shelves here and they are quite full. They are quite stuffed. That is the way that they always are. And I also do have a few up there as well. So the way that I organise it is we have contemporary and a few random things up here at the right at the top. We then have YA going across the top shelf. Uh, and we then get into fantasy. Uh, so we have some fantasy romance over here. We have more fantasy romance here. So there's some cosier things. We have dark academia things, we have sort of fairy tale-esque things, we have sort of the male fantasy shelf, we have Brandon Sanderson and other fantasy things moving down, other random fantasy things, and then we get into sci-fi over here, uh, going into not quite sci-fi but not quite fantasy and thrillers, and then we have TBR over on these two bottom shelves and then some of my boyfriend's books over here. So I'll talk you through in a little bit more detail each shelf. That's roughly how it's organised. Mostly fantasy things and things that I think look good together. That is the key to a, a bookshelf. Uh, well, a key to my bookshelf. I just go, it looks pretty. That will work. That'll work. Um, but I am constantly rearranging because of having my TBR and my red book separately. Uh, whenever I finish a TBR book, I have to try and make room for it on the red shelves, which can be a challenge when it's a series. It can be a real challenge. So uh, we will start at the top and work our way down. Okay, we're doing some balancing with the tripod. The tripod is not tall enough for these shelves up here. So up here at the top, we have Jane Austen and some classics, followed by romance here, uh, followed by random fantasy that doesn't fit anywhere else. Uh, so we have the Lord of the Rings up here in the old editions. We have the final two books in the Invasion of the Tealing books. I do have like two bookshelves back at my parents, which are full of books as well. Uh, so that's where the first book is. Uh, we then have the illustrated editions of the third and fourth book in the Harry Potter series, which I hide up here. I mean, I guess the highlight up here is the romance section and all the, the colours on this section. Uh, so I try, I only really buy like favourite romances, not just every romance. But yeah, you've got some favourites up here, like up just at the top, like The Hating Game, all time favourite. We've got Emily Henry, we've got The Love Hypothesis. So some favourite romances up there, hiding right at the top of the bookshelf. So then moving into YA, there we go, face more, more in there. Uh, so we have the Poison Study series, all nine of them. Uh, so they're all there. We also go into some Cassandra Clare books here. I do have, I do have like all the Cassandra Clare books but they are back at my parents. Like the, the original, like the Infernal Device is the Mortal Instruments. They're all back there because of when I read them. Uh, but I do have here the Dark Artifices trilogy as well as Chain of Gold. Uh, you'll notice that I do own Chain of Iron and Chain of Thorns, the other two books in this Last Hours trilogy, but they're not read yet. So they are separated. I will have to rejig things once I read them. We then go into the Witchland series. So I have read the first three plus a novella. I do own the fourth book, which Shadow, uh, which I have not read yet. I want to reread and then read that fourth book when the fifth and final book comes out. So that's my plan here. We have The Beautiful and the Dam by Renee Adier. I might not continue this series. I don't know. TBC. 
to be determined. I have A Curse of Dark and Lonely, I have read the whole trilogy but I unhauled the rest of it because the first book was the best book, uh, Daughters of Izdahar, The House in, Ceru in the Cerulean Sea and Firekeeper's Daughter all up here. We'll continue with YA. Moving across. Uh, we have My Boyfriend's Planet book up here, which he got sometime last year and still has not opened. Shame on him. Uh, so we then move down into the Crown of Feathers trilogy, which I really thoroughly enjoyed. Read it in 2021. Uh, we then have Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. And then the, I don't know what duology this is called, the Dance of Thieves duology by Mary E. Pearson. I loved the Kiss of Deception trilogy, The Remnant Chronicles, when I read that a few years ago. Really loved that one. That's back at my parents. Uh, we then move into Stephanie Garber. So I read the Caravel trilogy, as well as what will be the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. Really fun. Really fun. And she gets the prettiest books. Like, these books are stunning. And then they have, like, something on the dust jacket. Not just check it, the hardcover itself. Like she is doing very well with her pretty books. Very well with the pretty books here. And like this is just a, a standard edition. It's just amazing, amazing. Speaking of pretty books, I have Daughter of the Moon Goddess and Heart of the Sun Warrior. Like so pretty with the spread edges. It's just so pretty. YA books can be so, so pretty. Uh, we then have the Gracing trilogy and the Ember in the Ashes quartet. So moving on to this more fantasy romance shelf now. So starting over here, we have the Dark Fever Fever series, the first five books by Karen Marie Manning. Uh, I know that this continues and I have always like planned to continue, but I read these, what, 20, 2018, 2019? And I really love them. I really love them. But the fifth book like wraps up. Like I think originally this was going to be five books. Loved it. And I was like, I will continue. And then I just haven't. Uh, but I do feel like this was a really satisfying arc. Uh, I've got some Sarah J Mass books up here. And it's not like I adore Tower of Dawn. It's just <laughs> the reason I have two is that Sarah J Mass did a London event. And for that event, you had to buy Tower of Dawn, which was the book that was coming out at that time. So I bought the paperback of Tower of Dawn. Thing is, she was doing this event like two months after release. And I was like, I'm not waiting. I cannot wait this long for this book. So I bought the hardback so I could read it straight away. And then I got the paperback when I went to that event. So there was logic to it. There was logic to it. Uh, we have some Margaret Rogerson. Um, and then we move into Raven Kennedy and this series, which I'm currently reading, as well as the From Blood and Ash series as well. We have Radiance by Grace Draven, Magic of Blood and Sea by Cassandra, Cassandra Rose Clark, Serpent and Dove by Shelby McHurin. I've unhauled the rest of the series. Uh, Blood Mercy by Bella Roth and Laura Olympus by Rachel Smith. So that's that side of the fantasy romance shelf, which does continue and expand onto the next shelf. Uh, so we have a section on like Danielle L. Jensen here. So I have the Bridge Kingdom duology. I know that she's planning, I think like six books in the world, but each is like duologies. So I read the original duology. I haven't continued on yet as I was waiting for the fourth book to get released. So I could read that, uh, read the third and the fourth book at the same time. It's very tightly packed in here. But then, yes, I have the quartet Wow. The original trilogy plus a spin-off in this series, which I adored when I read it. Uh, we have the Half a Soul Regency Fairy Tales trilogy, and we have the Falconer trilogy by Elizabeth May, which I also adored. I adored these ones. Like, ones that people don't really talk about. Like, I read these probably, what, 2019? Absolutely love them. We're then sort of going into cosier reads, like Emily Wilde, which I read this year. Absolutely loved. And then, I don't know, there's just, you know, some, some sort of like weirder transitionings here. Um, Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern and The Ten Thousand Doors of January. I just feel like these books go together. I feel like they're suited for each other. They just, they just match. And then we're into like dark academia with the poppy wall thrown in because authors should stick with authors. Uh, like that is something that when I see authors separated on other people's shelves, I'm like, no, 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 no. Authors need to stay together in theory. I do have like some Sarah J Mass books that are, that are somewhere else. 
but I couldn't get them to all fit together properly. Also stick together. So we've got the poppy wall with my two editions of Babel because again, it was an issue with the signing. Like I had the fairy lit one coming, but the fairy lit one didn't arrive before I went and met RF Quang. So I had to get another edition for her to sign. Uh, along with Ninth House by Leo Bardugo, then the Deadly Education Scholomance series by Naomi Novik, and the Atlas Six by, oh, and the Atlas Six by Olivia Blake on the end here. I, I do have the self pub edition out of the Atlas Six as well, hidden behind here. Um, I just, this shelf is very tight, it's, it's squeezed in, so I won't get it out. Now looking at this shelf. So the reason I organised it like this is I wanted my four quadrants here where I filmed to be my favourite books. So on this shelf it's the David Bad Trilogy and Lenny Taylor. But we will get to that. S.A. Chakraborty, who is a favourite of all time author for the David Bad Trilogy. For the David Bad Trilogy, which I adore. Then we have some Lenny Taylor. I do have back at my parents the uh, trilogy, the Daughter's Smoking Bone trilogy as well by her, but I adored Strange the Dreamer, loved it. But we have Fonda Lee, and I know that this is like criminal what I have here, like absolutely criminal with the UK original paperback, the US hardback of book two, and then this absolute disaster of a paperback book three i mean look at all of those like cracks in that spine look at like the cover like falling off yes this book did come on a holiday with me like absolutely falling apart these yellowed edges from being in the sun falling like off the back here as well it's a disaster of a paperback i do one day want to fix this like i would want to get the us hardback of this i just haven't i just haven't and for now, we have this absolute disaster zone. Uh, we then have Juliet Marillier. So I have Wildwood Dancing, which is a YA book by her. And then we have The Daughter of the Forest, Seven Waters trilogy, original trilogy. I know that it's six books and there is another trilogy that follows this. But for now, I'm just sticking with this original trilogy. I'm hoping that one day they will release the next trilogy in these editions. They haven't yet, I don't know why, but I really hope that they do. And then have The Mask of Mirrors, waiting for that third and final book, uh, Before the Wolf, The Bear and the Nightingale, uh, Winter Night trilogy, Wolf and the Woodsman, Midnight in Everwood, and The Night Library. So you see what I mean why it's like fairy tale-esque retellings a little bit here. Not Joe City, not fairy tale retelling at all, but sort of in this section, like it's sort of sectioned. Here we are over here in my male fantasy section, aside, aside from Trudy Canavan, but relatively male section here. So starting over here, we have John Gwynn. Also, don't you just love this candle? It's a bit dusty. I can never light it. I could never light this. Like, it's just so pretty just the way it is. But uh, we have John Gwynn, a favourite author of all time, with the Faithful and the Fallen series, moving into the Of Blood and Bone spin-off trilogy, and then his latest publications, which is the Bloodsworn saga. Love John Gwynn. Love his books. Love, love, love. Uh, we then have Brian Lee Durfee with his books. Still haven't read The Lonesome Crown. We'll get there. We'll read it. But for now, just these two. Uh, and then we move into Ken Liu. So I've got The Paper Menagerie as well as his Dandelion Dynasty here, as well as my collection of bookmarks, all sat here. So I've got all of them. And then on top here, we have Trudy Canavan and the only trilogy I've read by her. I read these quite a few years ago, like 2018, and I did plan to read more of her books because she's got so many out. And I have always intended to read more and I just haven't. Maybe because like, I don't feel as though she gets that much hype on booktube, so I forget about her. And then I don't read her because I get distracted by other things that have more hype. And then we have the Empire of the Wolf trilogy by Richard Swan, where just awaiting the third book to be released. Moving on down. So this is like a Sanderson ad hoc random fantasy shelf. So we have the Stormlight Archive here, other books in Sanderson's Cosmere here, as well as the Rhythmatist. I know some books are missing that are my parents, like the rest of Mistborn Era 1 is there, but a bulk of Sanderson, Sanderson is here. Obviously, Rhythm of War is sat off by itself in the unread section. It will it will move over eventually. We have the Drowning Empire trilogy. It's in that third book. It's over there in the unread section. 
uh, we have the ninth reign, um, and then we move into the Lycanius trilogy as well as into the Godblind trilogy. Okay, moving across. Okay, so this is what I mean where I do have like one author that is spread across the shelves and that's Sarah J Mass, just because of spacing. Spaces is, is, is tight. So I do have the Crescent City series and a quarter silver flame chilling over here. We then have like some random standalones, Redemption Indigo, Gods of Jade and Shadow, before moving into Tasha Suri uh, with her books, um, and then A Discovery of Witches and this series by Deborah Harkness. Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher before getting into Samantha Shannon. Who knows what I'm going to do when I finish Day of Full at Night and trying to fit this on here as well. Maybe it will just awkwardly sit on top here, but for now I've got Samantha Shannon here. I do need to continue with this series, but I need to reread because I read this in like 2014, uh, so it's been a long time since I read these. Uh, and then we have V. Schwab over here okay, with like The Savage Song, uh, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, Gallant, A Dark Shade of Magic, which I feel like I want to reread prior to the new book coming out. Okay, down here we have my sci-fi into random section. We have The Echo Wife and Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. It's, you know, it's a slightly small, slightly small section in my fantasy section. I call myself a fantasy sci-fi reader, mostly read fantasy. Uh, we have To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers, The Blood Trials, Stories of Your Life and Others, Kindred, so that Parable of the Seller, A Memory Called Empire Duology, Ocean's Echo, Winter's Orbit, Children of Time. So like just a few sort of random sci-fis. We do have Skyward and Starsight here. I figured they were close enough to this Sanderson section that uh, they, they weren't too separated, but they are sci-fi. Uh, All Systems Red by Martha Wells. And then I feel like this is fantasy, but they do have like some sort of sci-fi elements to them in a way. So some Neil Gaiman, Robert Jackson Bennett, his little section that he has going on here. And then we move into some like random thrillery type books, mystery books uh, with Stuart Turton and Plain Bad Heroines. The final section over here on this side of things is my boyfriend's books so he has his pile of books here and then he has this bottom shelf here which i won't get into there are a few books on his shelf that i have read so he has the girl with the dragon tattoo books and i have read all of them the millennium trilogy and i've read all of them and he has the iron pilgrim by terry hayes which i really really liked as well so he has a few things on here that i've read but um they're mostly his Okay, so now moving over into TBR. So all the books that I have not read. So I have two shelves of TBR, one of which is double stacked. Oh no, they're both double stacked. They both have some double stacking. This is the TBR. There isn't like loads of logic into how I have organized it. It is just aesthetics and fitting it all in. So we have hardbacks here, really. Um, a few starts of series an ending of a trilogy, but a whole sort of mixture here. Uh, we have the Hand of the Sun King. We have all of the First Law, which I've been planning to read for so, so long. A few more starts of series all here. I've got quite a few starts of series on my TBR, which is hard because then I start one, uh, well, I read the book and then I have to go out and buy the rest of the series. Uh, we have the First Sister. Uh, we have, I'd say this is like pretty book stack. We have like a few Fairy Loot adult books from when I was on that subscription, which I did cancel, but some pretty books here. So again, hardbacks. Uh, what do we have behind? What do we have behind? This is the issue I have with double stacking is you forget what you have behind the books. I really want to get this down to um, just single, single stacking. Okay, so the only bit of double stacking I have on this top shelf is this bit here. So behind I have more starts of series. So you've got Daughter's Blood, we've got Wild Seed, Fantasy, not Fantasy, uh, Contemporary Romance, Ray Bearer, Incendiary. So some more starts of series. I think that's the issue with my physical TBR. There's lots of starts of series. Lots of starts of series. And it's figuring out which series I, I want to start. That's the issue. When you keep getting distracted by new series and trying to finish off series. So hopefully that won't be double stacked for too long. There's not too many books that are double stacked. Like, especially if I read some of the chunkier hardbacks, it'll be easier to bring books forward. 
And now into the very bottom shelf. Here we are at the bottom, which again has some double stacking to account for. So over here, we have some chunky, chunky hardbacks. Oh, I don't think I can quite put myself in. Uh, so we have the rest of like the last hours trilogy when you saw the first book right at the top. We have Witch Shadow, so that fourth book. We have Rhythm of War. We have the rest of Skyward. So this little stack here really is like my um, continuation of the series that I started. So hopefully this whole stack can be like easily, well, not maybe not easily, jengered into the rest of the shelves to so they can join the rest of their series and be together again because right now they're all set they are separated we have some french books we have some more starts of series like keeper of the lost cities uh, and some more finishings off uh, some more fiction middle game a pot of burning throne vespertine in a lovely special edition really pretty again like other ones which hopefully could join their counterparts up above oh everything everything is double stacked down here on this shelf everything is a double stacking here so we have more starts of series we have like more juliet marillier we have a continuation here the bush twins seven days in june exhalation promise of fire invisible library a curious beginning one dark window legend born vicious like a whole selection that will start series so, yeah. right and now we're moving on back to the back of the shelves what do we have back here we have dragon mage we have seven devils we have The Emperor's Blade, we have Peace and Turmoil, we have The Song Rising, Court of Miracles. So a whole section of things here. We have the Winter King trilogy sat back here. Temera by Naomi Novik. And then I'd say we have some like epic fantasies back here, like epic male fantasies in the main. So we have Sir Magician by Raymond D. Feist. So that series, The Gutter Prayer, Lies of Locke Lamora. Three Body Problem, I know that's sci-fi. The Name of the Wind, Empire in Black and Gold, The Dragonbone Chair, Ember Blade, Black Coast. And then we get away a little bit from the male fantasies. So we have some Rebecca Rowan Horse, uh, which I'm waiting. Like one day she will finish a series. She hasn't yet, so I'm waiting. I'm gonna, I'll start one of these once she finishes one of them. Uh, Lancelot, Invictus, and I Darken, She with Magic. So lots of like epic fantasy stuff back here hidden away, which I will one day get to. Right, there we go. There we go. There are my shelves. I have run through them, given you a rough overview of all the shelves and some random thoughts as well. Some random thoughts on some of the books on my shelves. Not as quick an overview as I planned, but a quickish, not quick, overview of my bookshelves. Let me know if you have any questions on my books, what books from the TBR I should prioritise and get to sooner, if you have read any of the other ones, if you're surprised by anything on my shelves that you didn't know that I had read. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my future videos. Bye!